in today's session, we are going to talk about how you, to, you can start writing your data synthesis, research synthesis, or the results or the findings section. So that is the next section. So we have spent some time on that section already. So today I want to take you through some examples and some kind of a typical structures of how this section is created, drafted, and kind of examples to show you how we can actually get, I mean, there is standard layout that most of the good SLRs follow and we should follow that. So I will cover that today. So we will look at some of the examples for the results and findings section now. So one of the things that you would start when you start writing this section is to begin with an opener or an opening sentence or opening sentences. So what is it that you can write here and basically using this section or the, this paragraph for that matter to give an idea of what, how the rest of the section is structured. So if there is a pattern that you're following, a structure that you're following, uh, mention that upfront in this, in these opening sentences. So the first thing that when you start the findings section of your SLR, uh, you can begin with a few opening sentences that give the reader the idea of how the results and findings section is going to be structured. So there are two examples that I will show you here from two different papers, what they suggest or what they have done in their paper, in their opening sentences. So if you look at the first one on the left, it says that in this section, the authors present and discuss briefly the results of the SLR study. For each of the research questions, the authors instigate them with a summary of most noteworthy results, a discussion about the most relevant facets, and based upon them, a suggestion for some explanatory hypotheses. So this is a kind of a structure that this paper is going to follow. So I broke that down into four sentences. The first one was in this section, authors present the results of the SLR study. So you can use something similar or a variation of that. For each research question, the author provide a summary of the most important results. So I rephrased this sentence a little bit. So not using words like instigate, noteworthy, and so on. Also provide a discussion about the most relevant facets or most important points, you can say, and give suggestions, explanations, and hypotheses. So basically, this is a structure that they have followed in this paper. Let's look at another example. Of the 49 primary studies analyzed, a total of 33 were identified. The appendix contains table one, which presents the general information on each system. So this is like the study characteristics table that we discussed earlier. Paper type, venue, year of publication, and table two shows a summary of the main characteristics. Further, we also tabulated the data with regards to each research question. Yeah, so from table three to six to, to seven, each research question has a table. So they have mentioned it in section four. So basically what contains in section four? Which section four you mean here? Uh, they have seen, uh, written uh, section four results and analysis. Huh. Like okay, so in this case, I think they may have split the introduction and prior research into two different sections. Yeah, or they may have added a background section separately than the introduction. So there will be some section that uh, that may may vary here in these tables. I'll have a look. I, I actually didn't notice that. <laughs> Thanks for pointing out. Okay, so here, what are they trying to convey? The appendix contains tables which provide some information. One of the tables summarizes the characteristics and there's one table for each research question. So when I will read the rest of this paper, I would expect to see at least one table in the each research question that is answered. So that gives me a kind of a structure to expect when I'm going to read. So when I read research question one, I will go and look for the say table three in this, in this case. So table three and research question one, I will maybe look at together while I'm reading that section. So some other sections, let's see what they have written here. Using the proposed classification framework, we cataloged 39 review papers in five areas. So they've mentioned these areas and there is a reference to a table. So what we could say, we cataloged X studies into Y areas. The cataloging aims to understand, aims to increase the understanding of a particular type of a method. So what is the purpose? You can say cataloging aims to do something in your context, whatever that could be. We discuss the findings of our review following the 
गाइडिंग क्वेश्चन प्रेजेंटेड इन सेक्शन थ्री